Hi everybody, this is Rob Swatsky from the York Campus of Hack, and in this podcast we'll be continuing on with muscle tissue and explore the structure and organization of the sarcomere. Inside the myofibrils are even smaller proteins called filaments or myofilaments. These filaments play a major role in muscle contraction. And there's two types of filaments. Thin filaments made up of the protein actin and thick filaments made mostly of the protein myosin. The filaments are organized in groups called sarcomeres, which are the functional contractile units of the myofibril. Dense protein clusters called Z-discs are located in between each of the sarcomeres at each of their ends. Remember that the Z discs have a zigzag-like arrangement. The thick and thin filaments overlap each other in regions of the sarcomere, which creates the alternating dark and light banding patterns of the striations. The degree of overlap changes depending on whether the muscle is relaxed, contracted, or extended. Distinct zones and bands can be observed in the sarcomere based upon the arrangement of the thick and thin filaments. These distinct arrangements are recognizable in the sarcomere and serve as useful landmarks. These distinct regions include the M-line, H-zone, A-band, I-band, and the Z-discs. In this diagram, we see one sarcomere bordered on either side by the Z-discs. Our first region is the A-band, and it's located within the middle of the sarcomere. And it's a darker region, which runs the entire length of the thick filaments. There is a zone of overlap at either end of the A-band where the thick and thin filaments overlap each other side by side. The I-band is a lighter region that includes the rest of the thin filaments shown here in yellow but not the thick filaments shown in red. Remember that the letter I is a thin letter, just like the I band contains only the thin filaments. The Z discs can also be seen passing through the middle of each I band. In the center of each A band is a narrow H zone, which contains only thick filaments. You can remember the H zone because the letter H is a thicker, wider letter, and the H zone only contains the thick filaments. In the center of the H zone is a region called the M line, shown here in the diagram by this chain. It consists of proteins that anchor and hold together the thick filaments. Remember the M line because it is located in the middle of the sarcomere. In this micrograph from the transmission electron microscope, we can see the arrangements of several sarcomeres bound together and separated here at the Z-discs. Here is one sarcomere from Z-disc to Z-disc. Here's our A-band running along the entire length of the thick proteins. In the middle we have our H-zone, which just includes the thick proteins and our I-bands, which includes only the thin proteins with the Z-discs running down the middle. And notice when muscle contracts, as we'll learn in more detail, the thin filaments are sliding past the thick filaments as the thin filaments are being pulled in the direction of the center of the sarcomere, being pulled towards the middle of the thick filaments here at the M line. And look how the H zone gets smaller and smaller. 
as the thin filaments are pulled inwards from each side, we see that area get more narrow and more narrow when muscle is in its maximum contraction. Now let's take a look at the different types of proteins that make up the myofibrils. There are three types of proteins organized in two categories. The contractile proteins, which are directly involved in muscle contraction and create muscle tension. The regulatory proteins that turn muscle contraction on and off. And the structural proteins, which help align the thick and thin filaments so their contraction works smoothly and efficiently. They also allow the myofibril to be extensible and elastic and connect the myofibrils to the sarcolemma. The two contractile proteins are actin and myosin, with actin forming the thin filament and myosin forming the thick filament. Myosin is a motor protein that takes the chemical energy of ATP and transforms it into the mechanical energy of movement. About 300 myosin proteins make up one single thick filament. Myosin has a unique shape. It resembles two golf clubs twisted together with their tails, the golf club handles, oriented towards the M line and forming the shafts of the thick filament. The two golf club heads are called the myosin heads and they project away from the thick filament toward the surrounding thin filaments. The thin filaments are made primarily of the protein actin, shown here in the diagram in yellow, but they also contain the two regulatory proteins, tropomyosin, shown by these brown strands, and troponin, shown in blue. Molecules of actin are twisted together into a helix to form a larger actin thin filament. Located on each actin molecule is a region called a myosin binding site, shown by these black dots on each of the actin protein subunits. The myosin binding site is the point of attachment for the myosin heads during muscle contraction. Here we see in this diagram the myosin binding sites on actin exposed, allowing the myosin head to bind and make contact to the actin protein. The two regulatory proteins are also associated with the thin filament. Tropomyosin is the long thread-like regulatory protein shown in brown that coils around the actin molecules. When muscle is relaxed, tropomyosin covers the myosin binding sites on the actin as shown here in the illustration. This prevents muscle contraction from occurring. There's nowhere for the myosin heads to connect to the actin. The other regulatory protein, troponin, holds tropomyosin in place on the actin and is also the binding site for calcium ions which trigger muscle contraction. As calcium ions, shown here in purple, bind to troponin, shown in blue, it changes the shape of troponin which twists the tropomyosin away from actin's myosin binding site. Here you can see the binding sites are exposed. Now the myosin heads can bind to actin and begin muscle contraction. Think of the calcium ions as the key and troponin as the ignition. So when calcium comes on in to troponin, just like a key in a car's ignition, muscle contraction movement is turned on. And we'll look more at the contraction cycle and the elements of muscle contraction in a later podcast. There are a dozen or so different structural proteins which play many roles in maintaining the shape, structure, and alignment of the sarcomere. Titan is a giant protein, hence the name, that runs half the length of the sarcomere from Z-disc to M-line. In this diagram of the sarcomere, we can see Titan shown in gray, where 
in one sarcomere, there are two molecules of titan because it is attached to the M-line here in the middle of the sarcomere. And we know the M-line is attached and anchored to those thick filaments. Titan helps stabilize the position of the thick filaments here in the center of the sarcomere. But look at the other end of Titan that attaches to the Z-disc. These coils represent Titan's elasticity, where Titan allows the sarcomere the ability to extend or stretch four times its normal resting length and then spring back to its original length without any damage. Titan helps give the sarcomere most of its properties of extensibility and elasticity. The structural protein myomycin makes up the M-line, which attaches to the thick filaments and Titan, securing them both in the middle of the sarcomere and helping to keep the thick filaments properly aligned. Nebulin is a structural protein that is wrapped around the entire thin filament and helps connect the thin filaments to the Z-discs. Dystrophin connects the thin filaments to the integral membrane proteins in the muscle fiber's sarcolemma, which we know is the plasma membrane around the muscle fiber. Dystrophin helps support the sarcolemma and can transmit tension produced by the sarcomeres during contraction to the tendons. This is also the protein that is affected in muscular dystrophy, where the gene that codes for the production of dystrophin is mutated. This results in little or no dystrophin, resulting in tearing and damage of the sarcolemma during muscle contraction, which ultimately destroys the muscle fibers.